because there is a very big difference between law of attraction and manifestation. Okay. And I think that we've all been confused by that at some point, but when we look at who you are as a creative being, when we're anchored in the 3D, we don't have a lot of inner perspective. We don't have a relationship with our creator when we're down in 3D. So when you start to get into this 4D realm, you really start to build this third relationship. You know, you have a relationship with your desire, you have a relationship with your pain, and now you're gaining a relationship with your creator or your neutral perspective. This is where manifestation happens. It does not happen without a third point. OK, so we're going to be practicing that today so you can see what that looks like. But in the webinar, I'm going to be giving you guys like exact references and processes that you can use like in the moment to rebalance yourself, because you may not know that judgment towards anything is going to be choosing 3D in the coming years. Anything, anything you judge right? You judge your light, you judge your dark, it's considered darkness. So you're really going to be working out your own kinks over these next few years of learning how to see darkness differently, to see negativity differently, to look at it as the greatest tool you have. And when you shift that perspective, you're going to start seeing your whole story differently, which is where the heart kind of comes in and and acts as this neutral observer that says, no, 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 look, you need this dark because this dark is what going to anchor in your light. Without this darkness, you wouldn't be real. You wouldn't be form. You would just be a, a illumination. So you're going to you're going to start to have that relationship with your heart. But first, you have to get online. OK, and the heart field is where you anchor in 4D and you begin to live through love. What would love do? What would love say? All these questions that you can ask yourself, because when you are looking from a third dimensional perspective, 90 percent of your day is outwardly focused. And so ego is channeling. You're always channeling 24 hours a day. You are always channeling something. Most of us channel our lower consciousness about 80, 90% of the day, even if you're doing the spiritual work. And the reason why is because you're outwardly focused and that's ego's dominion is the outside world. Let me see if I can do something out there. That's all just a facade of yesterday's thinking. You cannot change physical reality. You have to go inside the workshop and work with your three-part team, okay? Because if you go in with a two-part team, all you're getting is law of attraction, which means that you can attract through magnetism, through calling it forward, that which you desire, but you will be calling forward that which you desire with all aspects of you because you're the alchemist. So that means that you're calling forth that desire with your shame included, with your guilt included, with your anger included, because you're not just going to call something forward with your joy and bliss. You call something forward with all of you. This is why usually on the front end, it looks all pretty and shiny. And then underneath, it's like somehow it's shaming you or somehow it's guilting you because you're always attracting with all of you. And so the more you would consider yourself a light worker, the more that you are probably in resistance to your own dark and the world's dark. And this is where it's going to really be a coming to Jesus for you in the next few years, because you cannot be in judgment of any, any part of the dark and anchor in to four and five D. Okay. So if you kind of look at the biblical stories, this is what Jesus was doing before the resurrection. He was he was reconciling. He was getting himself neutral. He was clearing out all of the charge, all of the hunger and the, all of those feelings that he was judging. And so then when he when you guys saw him doing his miracles or you read in the Bible when he was doing his miracles, he was living from 4D heart centered creation, which is a total integration of 3D, which is 5D. So 5D is when you live in a complete state of non-resistance and non-duality, which means there is no bad or good. Everything is a tool. 
everything is a tool. And if you can literally imprint that, everything is a tool. And to understand truly that if you are surrounded by dark, that means that your light is a lot brighter than you think because creator always has the perfect match of dark and light with you, which means like as you've been rising in your light, your dark has to match that. And I don't mean evil when I say dark. I do not mean evil. What I what I mean by that is resistance, discord, lack, okay? Maybe suffering, scarcity, but none of this is inherently evil. And the true definition of evil is suppressed, contracted trauma, left alone too long. That's what forms evil or that kind of operation of, you know, this idea of insatiable zombie type of energy. It's like the, the ultimate desperation, the ultimate scarcity, it's the predator energy that comes from trauma that is left alone too long. Okay. And you, you can never channel anything eviler than your own ego, just so you know. So all these months where I was going through spiritual warfare, hello, my own ego. Okay. And so we cannot channel anything that is darker than our own ego, because we can only channel all of me, which is well, I've got ascended masters here, but I also have some demonic energies. Okay. So I can channel throughout the day all these different beings, depending on where my mindset or state of being is. When you are in the state, you are in the character. And when you're in the character, you're channeling. So those of you who do not believe that you can channel your higher self, it is your ego that believes that. <laughs> because you can channel yourself actually easier than ego. It, it, it takes about... 80% more energy to channel your ego than it does your higher self. Because you have to go down into dense city to channel your ego. But what I'm saying is, is if you guys are living there, and that's who's in your body when you wake up in the morning, and that's who's, in, you know, it's that outward focus you is going to be the ego that's constantly looking at life as the struggle or I've got to go here and I've got to go there. I've got to do all of these things. And this is where we want to really anchor in to begin to live from the heart. So this is going to be a state of basically being and doing from a still place. And that is going to qualify of really looking at, am I really busy in the world or am I equally parts still right now? The ego cannot sit still. The ego must outrun its past. It must plan for the future. It must problem solve. It must, you know, create all these little things to distract your energy. And one of the biggest falsities that I always struggled with the concept, I don't know if you guys have, but I've always struggled with the concept of raise your vibration. I don't know if you guys have, but you're thinking, how the hell do I raise my vibration? I thought my vibration was raised because when you see yourself, you are probably the kindest, most loving person, you know, out of your world, you are probably that person. And so how, how do I, what, what I think is going to help you understand this better. And this really like it landed for me. It's not about raising your vibration. It's about keeping your energy. So when your vibration is low, right, or your vibration is not here for your own use, then it's somewhere else, which means that your body is saying danger, danger, danger. We don't have what we need energetically. That is going to manifest into money. That's going to manifest into health of the body. So if you don't have health in the body, it's because your source energy is not here. It's out there. If you do not have money, your energy is out there, which means that you could, your give and receive ratio could be completely off whack because you're giving too much to the 3D world and you're not filling up. So ultimately, the relationship that you are having with your masculine and feminine energy is going to be how all of your relationships are outside. So this is the fundamental relationship that builds the relationship with money. It builds the relationship with the health. It builds the relationship with joy, purpose, 
right? Service to humanity, friendships, and then it just kind of like echoes out. So like, let's say, let's say you're in a relationship or you're married right now. Okay. And, or if you're in a single space, pull your last relationship up and think about the dynamic of that relationship. How did you see him or her? And how did you see yourself with that person? What was that person dominantly pointing out about you? And what were you dominantly noticing about this person? Now, let's say you're with this person now. That's going to be easy to see. And again, whatever comes up, don't judge it. Don't make excuses. Oh, well, well, just let it be there, whatever it is. No judgment. Okay. Oh, well, he's great guy, but he's sick. Right. Or she's wonderful, but she's, you know, negative. Okay. That will tell you that is your feminine state of being. If you're a man looking at your woman and if you're a woman, Look at your man, and that is the exact state of relationship between your feminine and your masculine energy. So your most intimate partner, or your last one, is the blueprint of the relationship between these two hemispheres. So if you want that relationship to change, we have to do some marriage counseling, which I highly recommend, because this one, this one has changed my world, you guys. Like, changed my whole whole world when you start filling up you first and the world gets your overflow that's prosperity but if i'm out in the world trying to get prosperity to fill me up i'm in scarcity feel into that for a minute because the universe does not see any of your relationships except this one the one that you are having with your yin and your yang and if there is no mediator, okay, so let's just take, I've done so much marriage counseling in my earlier years of coaching. I don't know why, probably because I really needed to do marriage counseling. <laughs> so, but I didn't get the memo, obviously, but now I get it. So this idea of, of the mediator or the marriage counselor is going to be this non-emotional observer, or in the matrix, we call it the Neo. But for us, it's the one that's going to play the mediator. So in your relationship right now with your spouse or partner, who is playing the mediator for you to basically come back into union when there is a disagreement, when there is separation, when there is a conflict, maybe of belief systems where there's a dis like disagreement of, you know, some sort of ethics or something. I don't know. Who is the mediator? Well, if you have no mediator then your ego will play the mediator and his ego will play the mediator. And this is why there will always be a wall between the union of this person. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to become that meteor for this relationship. Because this is the only one that needs mediation. And that would be like having God at the center of your relationship. You take your problems to God. He takes his problems to God. There's a union. Because the resolute is, is that if you're taking your problems to your ego and he's taking his problems to the ego, there is resentment. There's judgment. There's disappointment. Okay. There's bitterness. There's confusion. There might be fear. There, there might be guilt. There might be shame right? There might be weird attachment needy energy somewhere that you can't place. These are all characteristics of your ego mediating your relationship, which means your ego is playing your third point. And this is the issue. Also, is ego playing your mediation between your relationship and money? Is your, because you, you remember that ego's only ability is to live in lack. It can never live in abundance, except an abundance of lack, which it will get you into, no problem. It's like ego's here to get you in debt, and your higher self is here to get you into the credit. So if we were going to look at the inversion of God, which is the credit, and you were going to look at the, the, the other side of that, that's getting you indebted to lots of different things, people, places, and things. 
So if you're finding yourself indebted in your relationships or indebted with money, it's because ego has been playing that mediator. So this is going to be a really great fix for you to start going, wait, who's mediating this relationship? Because we're, like when I used to do marriage counseling, I would do it separately. And the reason why is because whoever the dominant energy or who had the strongest ego of the marriage was always the one that was over talking everything. And the other one was just like, yeah, whatever. And I, they would both lie, you know, and I could see that in their nervous system that they're lying. And so when I started doing it separately, what I started noticing is that the biggest fundamental problem was that there was just misunderstanding, you know, women's like, he should read my mind. He's like, I can't read your mind. You know, there's all these things that happen. But when ego is the mediation ship, it is going to self-destruct just the way it does to your body, to your finances, and to everything else. So all we're going to be doing is shifting that mediation into the neutral observer. And the neutral observer is going to listen to both sides, just like I did. And I'm going to hear his universe, and I'm going to hear her universe. And you know what? They're both right in their universe. In their universe... They are the main character. And so they are coming into this particular marriage with all their baggage, with their belief systems, with their desires, with their hopes, okay, their dreams. And the first few months, it's like, oh, yeah, we have the same hopes and dreams and that union of like ecstasy. But really what it is, is a trauma bond if ego is at the mediation point, this is why, like, if you study Christianity, it's like the marriage lasts so much longer because God is the trinity point of their marriage, which means that there's conflict. And I'm not talking about religion because that's just wrong. That's not the right mediation. But like a relationship with God where you take all your conflicts to God, not your person. Okay? Because you're right in your universe. But you need to be right in his universe. And so if you looked at two planets, right, and they're and they're working in harmony together in an orbit, they both have their own orbit. What do you lose in a relationship? Your orbit. So now whoever is the strongest personality or it's like, OK, one of you has attachment disorder and one of you has rejection disorder, whatever it's called. It's like going to be stuck together through finances or obligation or, you know, self-care, whatever it is you're doing, providing for them. And you lose your own orbit and you become this one entity where now it's like I can't be myself and I have to lose parts of myself or I can't speak my truth because you don't understand what I'm saying metaphysically and so I have to turn my volume down in this relationship blah 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 all the stories that we have and so if you understand that oh in 3d what ego wants you to do is lose your orbit to everything it wants you to lose your orbit to your dreams and to your body and to your money and because if you have your own orbit you have your own mediator you have your own counsel. You have your own higher self. You have your own intuition. If you do not have your orbit, your toroidal field that works from the heart's field, then you're going to have to get your mediation from the matrix. And mediation to me is like that non-judgmental biased. Once both parties, like it has, its desire is union. Okay. Okay. Your ego's desire is not union for anything, no matter how much it says it is. It wants you separate, alone, broken, shamed guilt, because that's the vibration that is in. It is not bad. It's just that's how it was made from all of your programming. Okay? It's not bad. It's not good. Just like a snake is not bad or good. It's just the way it was programmed to be. So looking at the most difficult challenges you're having in any particular area right now, all you're missing is the neutral observer to be able to look at both parties. And the way that I do this now, because I do this like several times a day, is I kind of take the role of if you have multiple like uh, kids or if you are multiple siblings and, you know, two kids are running up to mom like hey! Right. Like, what does that mom want more than anything? What does that dad want more than anything? Just union, happiness, family. It is not like you're right and you're wrong and you did this. It wants both of them to win in harmony.
It wants them to get along and create. So you want to look at that like either a loving mother, a loving father, but it's unconditional love for both your dark and light. So your your limitations come up. Mm, I did this. And then the light comes up. I can't have this. And the loving neutral observer is going to sit there and be like, I love both of you. Because you wouldn't be here without the dark. This form you're in is considered dark energy because it's a negative charge. It anchors you to the earth. You would fly away and be nothing but electricity and electromagnetic charges. That's it. That's all you would be. And you need that magnetism to anchor you in with that negative, positive, neutral. That's what creates the quantum particle. And so as we are all working back into the heart... This is going to be a really quick way for you guys to start living from that mediation point rather than your rights or your wrongs. Because just like in siblings, there's always going to be one that's a bigger bully. There's always going to be the people pleaser. There's going to be the helper. There's going to be the rescuer. There's going to be the golden child. Okay. And so if that idea that your ego is kind of the squeaky wheel that keeps getting everyone in trouble. And then you've got the higher self or the inner child or your dreams, whatever you want to call them. That's the one that's like head in the clouds, doesn't want to be a part of the system, doesn't care about money, just wants to love everyone. And you can see that that would be very difficult for a mother or a father to try to wrangle all the time, especially if they weren't coming to her or him. And see, you don't come to your creator well, I mean, you do, but you're in the past to get yourself into situations of scarcity, lack, suffering or illness. You did not come to your mediator. You didn't. And see, this life, you guys are in the workshop. One of the reasons why St. Germain says try to go to one meal a day is because that will like without without doing anything at all, it'll start bringing the mediator in because there's space if I have constant food all day long, the food can become the mediator. It can put me into a mood. And then I might be swayed by this mood. Like I might eat candy or something and now I have dopamine and I say yes to going somewhere. I don't want to go because I was in a dopamine hit. You don't have that clear, non-judgmental idea of both of these charges that have to come together for you to create something new. So in Law of Attraction, you are using the masculine and feminine energy to draw forth something to you that already exists. In Manifestation, you're pulling heaven down and creating something brand new. Got to hear that. Brand new. New to my reality. Neutral. So without the neutral, you will never create anything new. So really take stock and look, do I have any new people in my world or do I have the same casting characters or is anyone in my world going through an awakening? Are they changing? Are they becoming a new version of themselves? Am I starting to see more harmony? All right. Is it the same money situation? Is it the same body issues? So if you were manifesting, you would have the new body. You would have, and again, it's going to be the quantum leap. And it may feel very much like your old one, but it won't have that backache or it won't have that headache. Or maybe your spouse is now just not nagging you and is allowing you to be your weird self. I don't know. Okay. But if you're not creating anything new, then all you're doing is attracting. And you're going to attract to you through rejection and through command like desire and rejection, you're going to man or you're going to law of attraction. You're going to attract whatever you are a vibrational match of. So everything that is attracted to you is coming from the electromagnetic charge within you. And again, this isn't like spiritual woo-woo. This is just physics at this point. We're, we're going to notice that as we get into the higher realms, there's nothing that I need you to believe that we can't prove because in all forms of creation, even for your car to work, there has to be three elements. There has to be fuel source. There has to be a driver, right? And there has to be the vehicle. 
And so your blender has to have electricity. It has to be the blender and it has to be the cord, which is acting as the mediator. It's holding, it's acting as the container to hold everything in place. So like when a sperm and an egg come together, right? They come together, this electromagnetic, like obsession, like your last twin flame relationship, like just insanely attracted to each other. As soon as they start to come together, the dark starts to grab onto the light. So the egg starts to pull in. It looks like the sperm is going in, but the egg chooses. So the darkness actually devours the light, covers the light in darkness, and it begins its dance. All right. Now, what is the where's the neutral observer? The womb. I'm holding it in place and I love both of them. I can't love one without the other. And I can't love, you know, I can't love them differently. I got to love them the same because there's a positive charge. There's a negative charge and it is in perfect balance. Now, imagine if that egg had a personality and the sperm had a personality. And what if they didn't like what was happening? What if I didn't like being surrounded in darkness and losing my identity? I don't, I'm not free to swim anymore. I'm not myself anymore. I, I'm losing who I am and I'm starting to separate and I'm becoming all these different versions of myself. The egg might say, oh, I don't, I don't like this feeling. I don't like all this light around me. So if you look at the negative charge, it's light, it's, it's form without life. And if you look at the positive charge, it's life without form. So the next time you're judging your darkness, it's uh, your debt is just form without life. That's all it is. And your desire for credit is life without form. So this is just basic creation 101. This is how easy it's going to be, but you've got to be holding all three of those points for yourself. And if you can create space, like what I showed you guys how to do in the alchemy training of, um, of the workshop, which I will be kind of teaching a, a more kind of advanced version of that in the webinar on Sunday, which you will be able to watch it a little bit later to, if you're not available. So don't worry about that. But it will probably be 90 minutes and St. Germain is going to go into some really good creating space, creating neutrality, collapsing the wave, building new timelines so that you can see that molding your reality is done through the masculine feminine energy, but it has to be contained by a neutral observer, which means that if you are like in your imaginary, you're like, oh, I love this. But then you look at your negative circumstances. The observer is not neutral. Your observer is in judgment. And therefore, you will not create anything new, but you will attract more judgment. Because the container is now judgment. So whatever the container is that houses the masculine feminine charge is going to be what it's molded out of. So it's not going to be neutral. It's not going to be new. It's going to be more judgment, more this. And it's going to feel like the old pattern. So one of the things that's really important for us to do is really start to, and this goes back to one of like um, Joe Dispenza's first books, like Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. OK, you are so used to ego being the observer. OK, and it's almost like you say something that just came out of you and you're like, and then egos, there judging. You might look really stupid when you said that. That was who was observing your expression. And this is what makes the body go into traumatization of itself because it's like, I am here. And then your ego's like, you look like an idiot. And that's the observer that you're using to create your reality. Just like if you were a child and you had parents that were constantly critical of you, your parents are supposed to be the neutral observers so that you can become yourself. So this is where the matrix is almost like a vacuum of judgment on top of judgment on top of judgment. And so the only way that you're truly going to be able to look at all the dark parts of your life is if you look at this like scientific creation rather than your life. Because you, I, I can't tell you how many people tell me, what, you don't understand, Jess. My story is different. Ain't, no, it ain't. It's not. It's time, relationships, health, and money. There is nothing else. I've talked to people all over the world, different age ranges. There ain't no other problems. Your problems are no bigger or smaller than anyone else's. It's all perspective. 
but the observer is the problem. Because when you observe your challenge or debt or emptiness or lack or scarcity through this is wrong, well, now you are giving more energy to the dark. So if I have my hopes and dreams, I have my shitty circumstances, which are kind of balanced, maybe, because God creates perfection of balance. You never have more darkness than you have light. But if I'm the neutral observer and I'm in judgment, well, then judgment is what's called a negative charge. So now I'm going to make this heavier. Now I cannot manifest something new because I'm not fertile. This has to be balanced. So now I have to use law of attraction and I'm going to be attracting from a need. So think of ego as the needy one, inner child as the wanting one. And the higher self as it's already here, perfect. So if there's ever a need and you're trying to manifest something, you're actually using law of attraction and you're using ego as your mediator. And this is why we keep getting same shit, different day, right? Or now that you have said yes to this ascension and you're doing all this inner work, you're pulling higher self down as the mediator and she or he is not allowing you to create any more lack. So now you just have to sit in all the lack that you've created until you balance it out. So if you've like done the work to get higher self, a connection with higher self, which means that when uh, shit is hitting the fan and you have hear that voice of peace, like everything's going to be okay. That's your higher self. Okay. And you've created that relationship but are you using that relationship to balance all these negative or two positive charges? So someone who says, I'm a light worker, they have too much positive energy. So they have all the vision in the world. They have all the ideas in the world. They feel like they're going to be the best teacher in the world, but they are terrified of becoming real of that. They don't want to be seen. They don't want to be no, like they have too much fear of the dark or in their judgment of the dark. They will never materialize as that prophet or as that teacher because they're, they're giving all their energy to the light, but they're judging the dark. And judgment is like immediately goes into debt of energy. So if you're debt, you're heavy. And, and the thing about debt that's like really interesting is if we can look at debt as an energy level, debt is almost like money that you spent that now you have to pay back, but you don't even have the stuff, the excitement, the pleasure, or the gratitude for what you bought. So now it's just shackles. And this is why... This is why the matrix wants you to get in debt. It's constantly sending you credit cards like, oh, because it knows that you're going to get into that instant gratification mode because ego is your mediator. And it's going to say, yes, like we will manifest the money later. I know. I've